All right, so starting things off, uh, we have that power conditioner by Furman. It powers everything in the rack, the head plus all of the pedals. It's an orange OB-1 500 watt head. I don't use distortion channels anymore, so I took the knobs off just to make it easy so nothing gets bumped. Uh, for the settings, we have the treble at 11 o'clock, mid-range at 3 o'clock, and the bass is all the way maxed out for ultra-low punch. We have this Avatar 1510 cab. Uh, again, really nice and focused, uh, low end, and uh, you kind of put it all together, and sound a little bit like this. All right, from the base, we go directly into the shore, uh, GLXD uh, 16, so wireless system. Uh, you can have up to four connected at the same time, which is great. I have three electric bases. I'll have a body pack able to do that. And um, another great part about it is it is a tuner. So it's just the first uh, first thing in the chain, really easy, simple, uh, ultra reliable. And um, it's probably just the best wireless unit that you can really get right now. Alright, next up we have the Polytune 3 uh, Noir, and uh, it might be weird thinking you have another uh, tuner on your pedal board, but uh, this one has a couple functions. Number one, it is always on, so even, even when you have volume, always on, which is nice. It is a buffer, so uh, I don't have to worry about any signal loss coming through. And uh, also, um, it's just a nice backup in case my wireless ever dies. Um, it's nice um, to be able to just plug in uh, a cable, you still have a tuner, it's fine. Also with uh, my acoustic instruments, um, I don't use wireless with those, so just plugging in like a Mogami cable, um, it's really simple and easy, and uh, you don't have to do any crazy modification. Alright, coming out of the Polytune, go straight into the Digitech drop pedal. Uh, great pedal if you're like me and you're kind of married to a specific string gauge, or um, also like me, all your bases are tuned to like standard tuning. And you want to go jam with friends who are in different tuning. You want to learn a song, different tuning. <clears throat> this pedal is amazing. Um, it doesn't track absolutely perfect for, let's say, recording. But for live jamming, it is absolutely incredible. <clears throat> it tracks pretty well. We'll go all the way down to B real quick. We are now in B standard. And uh, it also has a really nice octave feature for just an added effect. Alright, so this next pedal is pretty much the focal point of my entire pedal board and my whole sound. It's the Billy Sheehan Ultimate Signature Drive by EBS Pedals. This pedal uh, is basically a compression pedal uh, and a distortion pedal in one. Um, I only have a little bit of distortion that I'm using through this, uh, mostly just to kind of dirty up the clean a little bit, just so it's not crystal clear clean. Um, I have the frequency set to low and I have the phase inverter on to really focus on the low end. It has a boost too, which I don't really use all that much. And it also has a uh, swappable op amp drive chip in there. So uh, I actually had the dark glass one in there. So um, it kind of gives a dark glass vibe. So without it on, nice and then um the main feature of this is it has a clean loop and a dirty loop so the billy sheehan pedal has a clean and a drive loop what it does is it splits the signal uh leaves one alone and then distorts the other one and you can actually plug pedals into those uh loops to affect each signal before it gets combined so in the clean loop i have this bass chorus which is kind of hiding back here and uh, what i use it for is to kind of give um my low end, a more throaty vocal tone. Uh, it's really, really subtle, and uh, it's almost like a phaser in a way, but uh, without it on. Kind of gives it a little bit more of a vocal type feel, and really just makes it stand out. 
So in the drive loop of the Billy Sheehan pedal, we're using this TC Electronic, uh, the Mimic uh, Mini Doubler pedal, and it kind of uh, mimics uh, double tracking. So what I use this for is um, I have it on the tightest setting, and really just adds a little bit of extra character to um, the the distortion. It, the distortion is already kind of low, and this is a very subtle effect, but in a mix it sounds really good, and it just kind of gives your harmonics and higher end a little bit of a standout. So with it off. It's a very subtle effect, but um, you kind of notice it when it's not there. All right, coming out of the uh, output of the Billy Sheehan pedal, we have the first, yeah, I said first, of the Precision Drives. This is the Tokyo Drive, the limited edition one. And what this is doing is actually uh, something that's not really meant to do, which I know is kind of weird. Um, I actually have the tone all the way down and uh, the attack knob all the way down, no gain at all. What I'm using it is as um, I'm kind of making it, bringing all the low end back in that I lost through uh, the Sheehan pedal and everything else. Um, plus the noise gate is really nice because of the compressor that the compression that I'm having uh, through the Sheehan pedal. So um, it's really just trying to push the low end a little more and uh, just kind of make it punchy. So without it on. All right, so next we go into this Ampeg SCRDI, and I'm using it as a splitter. Uh, basically, this pedal affects nothing after this pedal in the chain, so it's all, everything you're hearing is everything before it, and uh, it's not going through my amp. This is going through the front of house, and what it's basically supposed to do is handle all the low end frequencies through the PA, which is more powerful, while my amp and cabinet carry the distortion high end. So this is pretty much always on um, and it's like a driving base underneath of it. So this is what it sounds like. It's uh, really punchy, really, really focused on low end. Um, and if for some reason my amp would ever die on stage or something, I can actually use this as a backup. All you gotta do is hit the scrambler switch and... Instant backup amp. Alright, out of the splitter, we go into probably the single most important pedal on the entire pedal board, and that is this bass compressor, the BC1X by Boss. In my opinion, the best bass compressor that you can buy. Um, compression is so huge with this. I'm not a really big fan of playing with dynamics. I want everything to be even and the same. So, without with it off... It just smooths everything up. Um, I mean, the difference is night and day. Always on. It's just the most incredible pedal you can really buy. I can't say enough nice things about it. And uh, it just brings everything up in the mix. And um, it really, really shines. All right, so we have come to the most boring pedal on the pedal board. But uh, a very, very important part. It is the Decimate pedal uh, by ISP. Um, it's the Decimator pedal noise gate in a, a smaller housing. And um, it really is so important. I'm using a ton of, of compression. I have two compression pedals on here. I'm using a lot of gain. And uh, you need it to be really, really quiet. So, I mean, if you... It's, it's you know, it's very loud, noisy. Really, like, uh, you can hear pretty much all everything. And then, uh, but all you got to do is turn it on. Dead quiet. So it might be boring, but uh, this thing is super powerful, and um, when you're turning up pretty loud, you, know, you kind of rely on it. All right, so we have made it to the second precision drive on this board, and this one is actually counteracting pretty much everything that the other one was doing. The other one was for low end; you wanted to hit the DI, so um, with all low end, so um, the PA is pushing all the the powerful lows, so you feel all the all the notes. 
This one, you want to hear all the notes, so uh, it mixes in the room from your amp and the PA. So, um, this would be pretty much considered my clean tone. You can tell the difference already. So it cleans it up really, really nice. Uh, the attack knob is pretty much is maxed out, actually. The brightness is at three quarters of the way, and uh, the noise gate is on to really help clean everything up. And this is pretty much where all the definition uh, from the from the rig comes from. All right, the last pedal on the uh, actual pedal board, not the last pedal. So uh, this is a Hotone uh, tuner pedal, which the third tuner pedal might be really weird, but what this actually does is I'm using it as a power attenuator. This is a 500 watt amp. Um, it is loud as balls with everything, with all the compression and everything. I mean, everything is so loud. Without this, I would never be able to play this amp in in any house. Um, so it's actually just using it as a, as a power attenuator, um, which is really cool. I'm going to do my best to not get evicted. And this is what it's like. Just to give you an idea, this is what it sounds like when it's off. So just to give you an idea how loud that actually is. So you're able to fine tune it with a little volume knob down here. And um, it really has come in handy and um, it's a cool little, cool little trick. Okay, last but not least is the newest addition, the RC3 by Boss Loop Station. Um, I had to move a bunch of pedals around, so this is actually the second to last thing in the chain now. Um, it's a great looper. I love it because my pedals all live in my pedal board, which is in my rack, which is actually on top of my cabinet, so I can't really hit things with my foot. This has a, um, a count-in feature, so you can hit it, and then it'll give you like a four count, and then you can loop, so you don't have to hit everything right in time. It's really great. Uh, it has um, a bunch of different features. It also has uh, the rhythm channel, so you can actually click this, and it gives you some drum beats. If you hold it down, you get bunch of different kinds. You can change the tempo. It's really great. And uh, yeah, it's, you can uh, have 99 different presets saved. And um, it's a great songwriting tool. Great to just jam with and uh, throw on, kind of see what comes out. All right, this little guy hiding right here is a Saturn Works mute pedal. It's completely passive, so it doesn't require any external power, which is super awesome. And uh, it is a mute pedal, like I said. I use it two ways. Uh, number one is um, I use a split signal rig. So through my amp and my cabinet is all like articulate and uh, distortion. And then through uh, this DI is really low and like subwoofer hit. And uh, this goes to a different amp and, or front of house. And uh, together, or if I want to mute my amp, use the uh, DI by itself. I also use it with this loop pedal. Uh, this way I can record my loops through my head and my cabinet and have them sound really good and articulate and then I can play over top or underneath of it by muting my bass through my to my head and then I can just play uh, with this so it doesn't muddy up any of the sound and you can hear everything. All right here is my acoustic rig. Um, I use the Ovation bass uh, for plugged in kind of stuff. So, um, so it starts with the amp. It's an orange Crush Bass 100. It's got a 15 inch speaker and I run it completely flat. Uh, it's, this is what it uh, sounds like with it off. And then when you turn it on. such a crystal clear transparent sound especially for acoustic bass and then uh, to top it all off you want to get a little crazy it's got built-in distortion alrighty so in the effects loop of the orange amp I'm using this Donner Rev Echo it's a delay and a reverb pedal. And um, it's really just to kind of make it sound a little more natural, um, kind of like you're playing in a nice big room, um, and just fill out some space. 
It's pretty subtle. The delay is definitely more subtle than the reverb. Um, you can really only hear it if you uh, want to give it a little bit of a tail, you know? Um, so it kind of sounds like... So the only pedal in between my acoustic bass and my amp is this uh, TC Electronic Body Res pedal. Uh, most people would agree that piezo or piezo pickups uh, kind of sound artificial and um, a little bit thin. Don't really sound like you're playing an acoustic. It's got like a little bit of a quack. Kind of sounds like this. <laughs> compression, a little bit of hidden EQ, and uh, really just makes it all full and sounds like you have a really nice microphone in front of your acoustic. Alright, the final piece of the acoustic rig is a rig all on its own actually. It's this amazing acoustic um, bass from Spectre as well as the Tonewood amp. The Tonewood amp is an amazing effects processor. I usually keep it on the delay and reverb setting. Pretty, uh, pretty subtle, and it just makes everything sound good. It's, it, it's an inspiration box. I mean, when you turn it off, it's just... I mean, ugh. So you just gotta leave it on and just play. It's amazing. This is my, uh, my pick up and play, my campfire jam, uh, rig this is what you gotta have so I mean it's kind of pick it up and, and play you know mm -hmm. 